That is me being handcuffed to RL and then throwing the only key away. And that is still me running away from a safe that is about to blow up. Now the reason I'm doing all that is because I don't trust locks anymore. Mainly after finding out it takes seconds to pick them and also after seeing this guy opening a lock with a match. Well, maybe the problem is that I've always used cheap locks. But what happens when you get to the expensive ones? Do they actually get less? useless. My plan to find out was to test six different locks, putting a lot of valuable stuff on the line and myself, all to find out if there is at least one lock that it's actually worth having. Lock number one is a $10 lock from Amazon. And I mean, it's not a bad lock. It got a bunch of great reviews, but still, it's the cheapest one on the list. And well, my plan to test this lock was to chain my laptop, so there was no way to get it, and then secure the chain with the lock. And since I need this laptop for basically everything I do, Keeping the keys was a safety net in case I messed up and I couldn't open the lock anymore. But I thought about that later. The good news is that now I had to be 100% committed to opening the lock to get my laptop back. And if the lock could survive that, it means it's actually a good one. Right now, I had two options. Picking the lock normally, as I did with many others in the past, or trying the sketchiest method I found on YouTube, which is probably fake, and it could totally mess up the lock mechanism, making it impossible to then pick the lock. So I bought a bunch of matches. The plan was to extract the reactive chemicals out of the match heads and then crush them into powder. Basically making a bomb. Next, I started pouring all the powder into the lock mechanism and I kept repeating the same process until the mechanism was filled. Now, by following the sketchy videos I definitely shouldn't trust, by catching fire, the powder should magically open the lock. If this doesn't work and my laptop explodes, this video's gonna end. Alright, I was actually a little scared at this point, because if you think about this rationally, which I didn't, this thing could definitely blow up. So I checked the lock to see if the magic actually happened, and well it didn't. Then I went into panic mode. I kept trying over and over, like I tried a bunch of times and it didn't work a single one. Moreover, I couldn't pick the lock anymore, since the lock mechanism was probably broken, and so my laptop was officially trapped. So at this point I was considering investing in a circular saw, but... Luckily, then I realized there was another method I could try, the double wrench method. This time, I also got a reliable source. Lockpicking lawyer is a legend among locksmiths, and people locked out of their houses. So if he says this method works, I definitely trust him. Also, the technique is pretty easy. You buy some wrenches, you insert the wrenches into the shackle, and then you push as hard as you can, hoping to break the shackle of the lock. And even though I work out and stuff, at the first attempt, the wrenches didn't do anything to the lock, but they hurt me instead. So painful, what? But then I realized that something actually happened. I cut out a perfect circle from the lock. But then I tried again while standing up, and most importantly, using safety glasses. And this time... Yes! Oh, no way! No way I broke it! And after pushing a bit more... Come on! Come on! Yes! The lock was broken, and my laptop was free. Yes! The second lock is around $20, and it's a key safe. You know, the same ones they use in thousands of Airbnbs on the planet. So learning to crack this would allow me to spend nights in a bunch of fancy places for free. Joking, I would never do that. But I like to keep the option. Moreover, since I set high stakes for the first lock, I felt I had to keep it consistent, and so this time, I put the keys of my apartment on the line. Then I set up a random combination, locked the safe, and turned the dials, so that my keys were stuck inside. At this point, there was no coming back. And the only method I knew that could open this safe, I got it from another sketchy YouTube video. So, yeah. The key safe has a combination lock mechanism, but unlike a normal combination lock in which you simply pull the shackle and test different combinations, in this one, I got nothing to pull. Luckily, the only thing I need to open the key safe is actually just paper. Let me explain. Imagine the mechanism of each of these wheels having this sort of shape. It's not a full circle, but there is a flat part on it. And when all the wheels are aligned in this flat part, the key safe opens. 
And now that you know that, I can explain the paper thing. If we place this piece of paper in here and turn the wheels, the piece of paper should always stay at the same level. But when we arrive at the flat part of the mechanism, the paper should drop a little bit. And that's how we know that that is the right number. So I placed a piece of paper next to the wheel, and then I started turning it, testing different numbers. I didn't feel anything for the first few numbers, but then... Oh, I felt it. I felt it, that's crazy. It's kinda hard to see, but I clearly felt the paper dropping on the number two. And then I simply repeated the process for the rest of the wheels. Three, two. Now, 2852 sets the flat part of the wheels on top. But to open the safe, we gotta move the flat part to the bottom. And after a series of calculations, I realized that to do that, we need to add five to each number we found. Basically, two becomes seven, eight becomes three. 5 becomes 0, and 2 becomes 7. All right. This is either gonna work or... Or I had to tell my girlfriend that willingly locked ourselves out of the house. Yes! Yes! And no way, that actually worked. That was nothing though, because for the next lock, I wouldn't lock something away, but someone. The extremely important person to me that I'm locking away is myself. These are the keys of the handcuffs. And now those were the keys of the handcuffs. I'm gonna pick them up later, hopefully. The only thing I have with me is a paperclip. Now, the reason I decided to use a paperclip is because of how handcuffs work. So when you lock the handcuffs, the red mechanism you see there holds the handcuffs and doesn't allow them to open. So the theory is that if you insert a paperclip into the keyhole, you could lift the red mechanism and let the handcuffs open. Of course, when I started trying, I immediately realized this wasn't gonna be as easy as I was expecting. First of all, it was hard to insert the paperclip into the hole. And then the weird position I was in, well, it wasn't helping. I kept trying for 10 minutes and then I broke the first paperclip. This one is gone. So. I only have three paper clips with me right now. I'm not sure why, to be honest. I thought three were more than enough. So I started trying with the second one. I'm feeling the mechanism. I feel it, it's there. I just gotta be firm enough to push it down. The main problem is that I didn't know the 100 paper clips I bought from the Chinese store at 99 cents were gonna be that weak. But after a few minutes, I was bending even the second one. Ah. You know, I don't think I'm a fan of warm weather while being handcuffed to RL. <sighs> But then, something nice happened for the first time. Oh, I felt a movement inside there. Come on, I, I think I'm close. And indeed, I was. Oh, yes. Every single time you hear the click, it means I'm touching the mechanism, and then I'm losing it. To pull the mechanism down, I had to somehow get a better grip. And I tried to achieve so by bending the thing at a 90 degree angle, using my powerful tongue. And I didn't mean to do any sexual joke there. Anyways, I didn't know if it was working. But after another 10 minutes, this happened. Yes! 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 Oh my god! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! I was sweating so much. I was losing. I was losing hope. And after removing the second handcuff, yes. I was ready to move to the big guys. Like literally in terms of price and size. Lock number four costs one hundred fifty dollars, and it's a biometric padlock, which basically means it has no keys. You can either open it by inserting a combination or using your fingerprint. And I expected this one to be the best lock ever. First, because it's expensive. And expensive things are always the best ones. Kinda like this guinea pig armor that sold for $24,000 that is much, much more durable than the one I built for mine. But the main reason I thought this lock could be a good one is because it can't be cracked, it can't be picked, and there is no paper trick to go around it. But I knew I had one chance, besides this circular saw. My plan was to try the double wrench method once again but this time using way bigger wrenches. So I tried pushing as hard as I could. So hard that even my hair was struggling, no. but I couldn't do it. And I maybe also knew why. The double wrench method applies force to a pretty strong part of the lock. And in reality, the right way to do it would be to do it vertically, like this. This way, we would apply force to the weakest part of the shackle, and the chances of breaking it get exponentially higher. The only problem, my wrenches were too small. So I tried a few alternative methods to fill the gap inside a shackle, but obviously nothing worked. Nope. So I bought bigger wrenches. This was the normal one, this was the big one, and this is the new one. Unfortunately, even the new wrenches were not enough to fill the space in the shackle. But what happens now if I place the three previous keys on the bottom? <laughs> And there, I realized this could actually work. Now honestly, this hasn't been easy at all. I was expecting the shackle to blow up. 
but it never happened. The shackle kept slowly lifting at each attempt, and it kept adding wrenches to fill the space. And when I arrived at six wrenches, I finally got it open. Yes! Open! I'm a fan of this thing though. It's been a struggle to break it. Before moving to the explosive stuff, I wanted to test the $350 lock. They actually marketed it as the world's strongest padlock. And well, I don't think they're lying. It is insanely big. Especially if you compare it to this tiny lock I bought just to make it look like it. It's actually really heavy though. Just above 2 kilograms or a desert eagle in American units. Anyways, I tried to open it with the double wrench method. And it did absolutely nothing to it. But then I noticed that despite the appearance, this thing actually has a normal lock mechanism. So I maybe had a chance of opening this lock by picking it. I learned to do that three years ago and it's actually really easy. Basically, padlocks have a bunch of pins inside and because they're all a different length, they stop the lock cylinder from turning. The key basically aligns all the pins, allowing the lock to open. So the goal of lock picking is to align those pins using these tools instead of the keys. You use the pick to push the pins up and the torque wrench to rotate the shackle so that the pins don't fall back down. So I started digging around inside the lock, but it seemed like three years of not trying to steal anyone's stuff meant I'd lost my skills. Wise choice for me to not chain myself at a pole for this one. Then I heard a few pins clicking, which means I was doing something right. And when I thought I was finally making progress, this happened. So I basically just tried a different picking tool. <laughs> And it doesn't come out anymore. And even though after a while I got it out, I started doubting my lock picking skills. So I tried with two normal locks to see if I could open at least those. And I actually did it pretty easily. So I guess the big lock was the problem. Or the solution, depending on which side you play for. To convince this lock to open, I then tried an unconventional method. And it didn't work. But then, as you can clearly see here, something unexpected and extremely important happened. Sorry boys, I had to abandon the challenge. Props to the big lock though. Even lock picking lawyers struggled a tiny bit to get it open, so it's definitely a good one. The last lock is a safe. It was supposed to be $500, but I blew the budget for this video with the previous lock, so it's still a really good safe though. It has this kind of keys, and I have no idea how to pick that. So the only possible solution was firepower. My plan was to start with one firecracker and then keep adding more till I got the safe open. Obviously, my main concern was not blowing up with the safe, but no worries, I had it all figured out. So I got plenty of time, like 30 seconds, after I light up the firecracker, and I'm gonna hide behind that wall, right there. And in addition to that, I also had protective goggles. They are protective goggles, right? So I lit up the first one and ran as fast as I could. The explosion was super loud, but even though there was some damage to the safe, it was for sure not enough to open it. So then I tried with three firecrackers. And just so you know, I'm on private land, so I can safely do this. Just not sure who's the owner, but... This time it did a little more, but it still wasn't enough. So you can probably guess what I wanted to do next. Five firecrackers. They were kind of starting to look like a stack of dynamite, to be fair. And the sound was always terrifying. Like, I'm shocked every single time, but this time, even the damage was pretty good. It completely turned the safe. I think it's getting open, guys. <laughs> now, I could see the bolts, and I was confident that the next hit was gonna do it. So now, I wanted to try with six firecrackers. Please don't try this at home, guys, because we have all the safety precautions, like wearing Amazon goggles and running away as fast as possible. Anyways, I lit the firecrackers one more time, and I was scared the police would come, so I really hoped this was the last one. Oh yeah, I destroyed it. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's completely gone. So yeah, after 14 firecrackers, the safe was defeated. Now I'm not sure a thief would actually use this method, but if you are one, let me know in the comments. Jokes aside, the conclusion to all this is that I keep the big padlock. And if you don't want to spend that much on a lock, maybe the solution is just to trust people a bit more. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and watch another one.